Hey gang, welcome back to the big board and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, you know, I was driving back from uh, a town called New Braunfels today. In fact, I had a concert down there for, well, it wasn't really a concert, it was more of like some sort of singing competition thing that my son's involved in for choir. It's kind of one of the last activities you do for sixth grade. And so uh, we were driving back and I was listening to the Advanced After Combat uh, podcast as you do when you're driving in the car and your son refuses to talk to you and he wants to watch uh, videos or YouTube or something like that, uh, which is all highly educational. And so I was listening to ACC or AAC and listening to the chaps talk about block games and the, the combat mechanism. And it struck me that in block games, for some reason, there's this... Uh, Typically in combat, artillery will fire first to provide a, you know, some sort of combat effect, and then the defender will attack, and then the uh, the attacker will attack. Well, so to both sides resolve combat is what I'm trying to say, and there's air and other things. But what struck me was unu as unusual. In, why is it in block games that we have this construct where? an artillery piece that's supporting an attack or the defense fires and then the combat happens either the defender attacking first and I don't know why the defender always attacks first or why they can't just come up with some other means to resolve things but other than both people rolling a handful of dice right but it typically in then this was for FAB the Sicily game or the Bulge game one of the two and so it ends up that yeah, you know, that's very different from most of the Hex Encounter war games I've played, where you end up having, if you have artillery, it's either factors that are added in to the combat unit's attack or defense strength, or it provides a column shift, or it provides a DRM. And I was wondering if anyone knew the historical reason or the reason why that type of thing uh, happens in block games or how that mechanic came about, why has it been kept, why hasn't it been adjusted, is it better than the way things are done with hex and counter games, uh, is there a better way to do it? I was just curious, it's kind of struck me as an interesting, interesting, uh, interesting dichotomy, because really, uh, uh, besides the fact the block is unseen, uh, it's the same stuff, right? It's a counter that's thick standing on standing up vertically otherwise it's no different anyway just a thought minor <coughs> excuse me minor uh, minor comment i'm going to be on uh later tonight marco is hosting his uh, weekly chat and i think i'll have time to get on it this week i was on last week but haven't been on for quite a while so we can take up to eight people in the conversation which is a nice number of people to have you don't want to have too many or too few so if you feel like joining at 6 p.m central on saturday evening that's this saturday and in fact it's every saturday that marco runs this chat at uh, 6 p.m um yeah, central time. It's a good time. And it just runs for an hour and we talk about different stuff. And Marco usually has a pretty cool topic to discuss that is sometimes discussed and other times we just totally get off on tangents and talk about other things, which is kind of fun too. So anyway, thought I'd uh, share that with you. Uh, you should do yourself a favor and ch check out the, the, uh, the drunken ramblings of the Advanced After Combat podcast if you haven't already. It is indeed a hoot. Uh, Dave and Jason have mystery hosts on. They have good time. They talk about what they've been playing. They review. Uh, each person does a game review. So it's a great way to get uh, an individual's perspective on games. And you can probably understand from the guest hosts, you can understand where they're coming from from the games because you get to learn a little bit about their background and how they came into gaming. And you'll see across the spectrum of all those different guys that where they came from and who they play with really influences the types of games they they like to play. All right, that's all I got for you. Check out uh, the uh, Marco's thing tonight. You can He'll have a post on Board Game Geek about it, but it's at the... Uh, if you go to my webpage, uh, my blog, and you go to community, I think, there's a link in there for uh, anyone to use at any time uh, for chat. And... It's video and text chat. It's of all voice. 
uh, so you can turn your your camera off if you uh, don't want to be bare chested like one gentleman decided to be one time and he didn't realize his camera was on and we advised him to put a shirt on uh, so but do come clothed and come with uh, some interesting questions or some comments and chip in some folks just text chat with us and we read their comments out uh, it's a different cast of folks every week Marco is kind of the anchor of that thing um, I'm not I don't run it not really involved in it but that's absolutely a lot of fun. You can get to it from my community page, like I said. If you click on the Board Game Geek, uh, you can go there and see it. You find the link there as well. But it's appear.in forward slash big board. I think it's big board gaming or big board, whatever. Who knows? You work it out. Go to the blog and it's there. And uh, don't forget to check out the, uh, the Guild, Advanced After Combat Guild and their mini BGG uh, forums group that they have there which is really awesome lots of good insights a few good uh, game designers there that are helping out listen to that opera guy he's totally nailing it all right later